Hello, Diana here at Crooked Little Studio. This is an instructional video for those who have purchased my cardstock stencils and for those who purchased the digital files to cut their own. If you have stumbled across this video and are interested in these, please click the link in the description. I love, love, love working with cardstock stencils because of the beautiful outlines you can get on the ghost print. So, as you know, these will not last a long time due to the fact that they're paper rather than mylar. I'm going to show you how to best use them to make them last as long as possible. The main thing to do is to avoid putting them on the plate first and rolling paint over the top of them. This works fine for sturdier stencils, but this will shorten the life of the cardstock. Pressing them on top of a bare gel plate will make them harder to pull up which can result in tearing. It's harder to control the amount of paint this way as well, and excessive paint can weaken them. Instead, roll out a light layer of paint on your plate first. I'm going to use both Mylar and cardstock so you can see the difference. The first mask is brand new cardstock. The second is cardstock that has been used a few times. The third, which is not one I offer in this set, but you can see it has a lot of paint buildup on it. I have used this one a lot. The last is made of Mylar, okay? I'm using Master's Touch acrylic paint from Hobby Lobby, a gel press plate, and 80 pound drawing paper. So I'm gonna start by putting paint on my plate. And the trick is to know how thick to get it. So I'm spreading it around pretty well. It's probably a little bit too much. I'm going to roll off the excess and go back over it again. And maybe a tiny bit more. If your paint is drying on your plate, then it's too thin. You want it thick enough that you can still work it for a little bit with the brayer, but not so thin that it's drying out before you can put your masks and stencils on top of it. Okay, I think this is about good. So here is brand new cardstock. This is slightly used cardstock. This is a well used cardstock, and this is Mylar. Here's my paper. I'm pressing firmly. I'm using my fingertips as well as my palms to get around the edges of the shapes that are down on the plate. Pardon the thunder in the background. We got a little storm going on here. Hopefully my electricity will hold out. Okay, so I'm gonna do this quickly, but you're going to see that everything's pretty much the same regardless of the material that's being used. They all mask out the paint. I'm going to make sure I don't have excess paint in between the shapes. I don't think I do. I've got a scrap piece of deli paper here to pick up anything that might still be left in between. If you're picking up a lot, you're getting your paint on too thick. Okay, so when I pull these up, of course the Mylar leaves a lot behind. The well-worn cardstock leaves some behind. The one that's only been used a few times, you'll see the difference once I pull the ghost print. And the fresh one pulls up all of it, as long as it's not too thick. So very quickly, you have to do this fast or it dries on the plate before you can pull the ghost print. If that happens, you can always use a little bit of gel medium or something to pull it up. All right.
So notice that both the Mylar and the well-used cardstock leave paint behind on the plate. The brand new cardstock will pull up all the paint if you're applying it in a thin layer and it's going to leave the outline behind. And the more you use the cardstock, the more paint gets left behind on the plate for the ghost print. Because the Mylar is not porous, it's always going to leave some of the paint behind. So I hope you have fun creating with your stencils. Please tag me when you show what you've created with them on your social media. I love to see what you create with them. I'll see you next time.